Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted that you're with us here this morning. Perhaps you're visiting with us. We want to extend a welcome to you and trust that you enjoy what you hear today. We want to continue to pray for our nation. We want to continue to pray for our good president. We want to pray for our local community and we want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request right now. This is a great time to make that known unto the Lord. Let's pray together now. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the roadmap of the Word of God that gives clarity and direction. Father, we want to continue to pray for our nation and our president that you will navigate his steps at this time. Father, we pray for our local community that you will continue to open up doors of opportunity to witness and to share. And God, we pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church that you would open up the windows of heaven and provide your power, your presence, and direction. We ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. Before we get into this, uh, this morning, I do want to remind us that this coming Sunday at 11 a.m., which is Father's Day, is gonna be the very first time that our congregation will worship together as one in about three and a half months. Very, very excited about this. The coffee shop will be open and also the bookstore. With that being said, we are still employing the highest levels of, uh, of hygiene possible. Every temperature uh, of every person will be read upon entering into the building. Uh, masks will be provided if you choose to wear one throughout the service. We have hand sanitizers throughout the building and before and following service. The entire building is, um, is hyg hygienically prepared. And so we don't want anybody to be fearful uh, or be concerned about any hygienic concerns. With that being said, uh, there has been some situations where some people have been in quarantine, some people uh, have been working through some issues. We are requesting uh, that those of you that are in quarantine or you have been working through uh, being ill or being sick, make sure that you are tested and you're tested negative and that you are free of any um, any feelings or anything that would um, that would not be 100%. This, uh, providing you with a public service announcement like this is just to ensure that all of us continue to meet and worship and praise God together without any type of concerns. And we appreciate everybody for recognizing these things. Praise God. We wanna to go to the word of the Lord right now we want to direct your attention to Matthew chapter number 18. And we're going to start reading in verse number 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Very important verse. And after 26 years of pastoring, I can assure you that this is one of the most important verses because it's talking about the restoring of relationships. But let's continue. Verse number 16, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Verse number 17, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want to talk about um, the importance of forgiving your brother, the importance of forgiving your brother. This particular passage of scripture is uh, important and is almost immediately recognized by all of us. It's found in several uh, places in the synoptic accounts, 
um, here in the Gospels. And there are some things to take note of here, at least initially, that will clear up any misunderstandings that people may have about either being offended or um, being the one that walks around and does the offending. There are responsibilities on both sides. And it is the will of God that these type of relationships are cleared up as quickly as possible with the fewest amount of people involved as possible. Perhaps I should make that last statement again. With the fewest amount of people involved as possible. The reason why I said that twice is because the human tendency is once we are offended is to let our inner circle or even beyond that, let everybody know that I am offended and what was done to me. And although that may be the knee jerk reaction of the flesh, it is certainly not the directive and the objective of God. Let's look at this verse again and gain some insight. Verse number 15 says, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. If the real goal is the restoration of relationships, there are always going to be challenges to maintain relationships. As I've already mentioned, after pastoring almost 26 years, I have discovered that this is why people either gravitate towards um, a certain group or a certain group of friends and they don't venture out of that circle, or they withdraw from people as a whole and basically could be um, isolated people. Because relationships at times can be messy. They take work, they take communication, they take openness, and more importantly, they take forgiveness. In verse number 15, it is letting us know that if I become offended by somebody overstepping, getting off track, offending me, that the highest purpose is the restoration of that relationship. And the least people that know about this, the better. Go to him, communicate what he did, and do my very best to win my brother, to keep the relationship intact, keep my friendship intact, for in doing so thou hast gained thy brother. However, if this individual does not hear um, a soft answer, Holy Ghost reasoning, but somebody that's being as open as possible without being offensive themselves, then the Bible is recommending that we take two or three more. I don't believe that this is an opportunity to gang up on this person. I believe that what these are is these are witnesses of peace that are going to echo the need for restoration and to working through whatever issues might exist. It's not to argue. It's not to gang up on a person. It's not to overwhelm that person and intimidate them, but rather it is a unanimous voice seeking restoration, knowing that we, we be brethren. However, if this individual still will not yield and will not listen to two or three witnesses, then the Bible says, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee, as an heathen man and a publican. Very important sequence of events here because there's more going on here at this point now than just restoring a relationship and gaining your brother. Notice that in verse number 15, had this individual responded to open and clear relationship, to uh, open and clear communication, to restore and sustain this relationship, that I would have gained my brother. But if that same individual that in verse 15 was my brother, once that relationship is restored, will not hear the two or three witnesses, will not hear the church, then he that at one time was my brother has now been returned to his 
original condition of being a publican. Very important sequence of events here. I'd like to follow it up with this because in verse number 18, it says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That is not the first time that we have come in contact with that passage of scripture. In fact, in Matthew chapter number 16, in this famous setting where Jesus is giving Peter the keys to the kingdom and giving him newfound identity and purpose, Jesus lets him know that, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bound up, bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That same scripture about binding and loosing is used in what appears to be a judicial procedure that is taking place with hopefully a reasonable brother. But if they continue not to be a part of the reasoning of the overall higher principle of forgiveness and maintaining peace, communication, and relationship within the body, then that same individual could find themselves outside of the body of Christ. Jesus added once again, first he added it unto Peter, in setting, I believe that in the binding and the loosing and the opening and the releasing, binding on earth and bind in heaven and loose on earth and loose in heaven, that it was Peter's responsibility with the use of the keys that he was setting certain perimeters, articulating certain perimeters for the church of the living God. Here we're seeing one of those specifically with dealing with a brother or a sister or a relationship that will not come together and make peace. And so I submit to you, is it possible that a relationship that cannot be mended because somebody is unwilling to receive an apology or make an apology and make things right? And truly, there are more than one people that echo that there was an offense and yet there are weightier matters here by forgiving and apologizing and explaining and making things right and bringing relationships back together. Could it be that what we're seeing here is a judicial procedure to either keep a person in the church or removing them from the church? It's a big deal. Most of the time that I've seen after years of pastoring and working with relationships, either as a uh, arbitrator or as a mediator or just to listen that most of the problem is in verse 15 as I've already mentioned some people find it hard to resist the temptation not to tell others that I have been offended by what this person did to me and in doing so what they do is they muddy the waters of clarity where it could have been kept in the smallest circle possible in which that private confidential level that, hey, this is what happened. I don't wanna make a big deal about it. I love you, but this is what you did and we need to make this right. When other people are brought into this, it muddies the waters until now there can be hearsay, gossip, and now it becomes more difficult and more challenging. I believe that everybody, whether you're the offender or whether you're the person that needs to seek your brother out because you've been offended. I believe that following the biblical guidelines will keep things pure, clean, and keep those relationships intact. Oftentimes I've seen where people have explained to me the pastor, I don't trust myself. I can't go to this person because I'm afraid that I'm gonna to get too mad. I'm gonna say something that I don't really mean because they hurt me. I understand that. And that puts the responsibility on, responsibility on you as well, that you are to ma maintain your spirit. Perhaps you need to go through a time of prayer and fasting and get your spirit right before you approach that other person. Because really the objective here is not to, to vent or to blow off steam on this other person while you've continued to allow this to build up. But the real goal here is maintaining that precious relationship and gaining thy brother. Try it. 
you'll be blessed and you'll keep this relationship intact. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow.